Today, here in Geneva, this Bible study with our beloved Sister Mary Luisa. May God bless you all. Good evening, my beloved brothers and sisters. A very special greeting to you all, and as well for the brothers and sisters, those that are originally from Switzerland or Europe, I would say, because not only of Switzerland or Geneva, but as well there are those that are from another country here that is European. A very special greeting to those who are European born. I love you. I have great affection for you. I think of you as the fruit of that promise that the Lord made more than 50 years ago. You may be seated. Thank you. More than 50 years ago, the Lord spoke made us a marvelous promise. To two persons, we were searching for the things of God. And during that time, my husband, Luis Eduardo Moreno, we searched for the work of the Holy Spirit. We looked for the manifestation of the spiritual gifts. We read in the Bible that the Lord spoke through the gift of prophecy. And we were always searching. But the Lord in his indefinite mercy saw how sincere we were, moved to mercy, and used two women during that time. They were from Christian denominations, different denominations. And the Lord used these women to speak to us. So every eight days on Saturday, I didn't miss to go to these women to hear the word of God. Even though during that time, there, I didn't have experience, I didn't know, I didn't know what prophecy was, how it was. Simply, I had read it in the scriptures, but to read it and to live the reality is something so different. And we simply lived by the theory or what the Bible taught us. But we did not know what was prophecy. The Lord spoke and in without understanding, I was so joyful when the Lord would tell me that he was going to give me spiritual gifts. I didn't know how or didn't comprehend which way, but the Lord would tell us to continue forward. Praying, gathering together. Because he was going to raise up a church around the world. This is why I say I love so much those that are from other nations. Because the promise as well was not so much for Colombia. Because yes, us being Colombian, we could have said, Oh, this promise is just for us Colombians. The Lord said, it is around the world where I'm going to raise up persons that will form my church. <clears throat> persons around the world, the Lord said, and around the world where there is a sincere heart, humble, noble. I will be looking at the heart and I will convert it to me and I will bring it and they will gather in my congregation, in my church. And that one of many promises that the Lord constantly made us. And I thank the Lord and I always in my prayers, I remind the Lord or I thank him of that calling of those promises during that time. And I thank the Lord of the fulfillment that he has had and the mercy that he has had with us of giving his word fulfilled day by day. And we being able to enjoy of those marvelous promises 
during that time. Nothing has yet to be fulfilled of what the Lord spoke. And it is so how the Lord said it would be around the world where I raise up my church persons of all nations. This is why all those that are born from whichever country you might be, the Lord loves you. And the Lord has brought you here to gather you with us. And the Lord loves you because for the Lord, there is no culture, race, language, nationality. For the Lord, simply there exists a heart that is sincere and that wants to accept the Lord, that God exists, that there exists this supreme being, creator, this being that governs us. <clears throat> this is what he wants. And this is why he made us so many promises that were marvelous during that time. And the Lord has fulfilled. Step by step, he has been fulfilling. I remember that the Lord once spoke, when he spoke of his church, that it would be great. And we were only four persons that gathered. When the Lord spoke, you are going to be preaching to multitudes. For me, a multitude was a hundred persons. Because during that time when the Lord made the promise, we were four. So to me, a multitude was a hundred. And we have made Bible studies in Colosseums. I remember there was a Bible study in Columbia and Cali. There was about 30,000 persons that gathered. So the Lord perhaps must have laughed in thinking that I said the multitude for me was a hundred. This is the word of the Lord. And the Lord has been fulfilling his word and supporting us, supporting in this marvelous task. In the Lord, all that he has spoken has fulfilled and has never left us ashamed. The Lord spoke and allowed for the political movement media to be formed because the Lord said that he wanted to give example to the people, an example of honesty, of sincerity, of love, of hard work, working honestly for the common good, for the people, for society. And he has been supporting this group. He has been supporting this social movement. And the Lord as well spoke of the foundation the Maria Luisa de Moreno International Foundation, and the Lord said, we have to restructure because you will go very far. And it is so how the foundation has been greatly blessed. The Lord has opened doors, has brought great personalities, industries, companies, business persons, many government entities of all aspects, army, governments, police, all different types of ranks in the organiz organizations and they are all knowing the work that we do because it is the Lord truly doing his task, using us as well as an instrument. And the people are there joyful and happy. The people of the world, the people who do not know of God are so amazed and marveled of the work. All of this, why? Because the Lord spoke the Lord promised and the Lord has so supported because all that the Lord speaks, all that the Lord orders, all that the Lord gives, all the Lord supports. And without the support of the Lord, we would be nothing and we could do nothing. So therefore, I always thank the Lord when I pray and I remind the Lord for 50 years, I remind the Lord all that he promised and all that he has fulfilled. Today, seeing you all are the fruit, the result of these promises of God. And this is why I know that you are going to be greatly supported by God. Because you are fruit of that word of God. And of that promise of the Lord, and you are here, you are here living in these countries, the Lord has used you to plant the seed of this word of our Lord. The Lord all has everything into account. He sees everything. 
He sees the work of each one of everybody. So therefore, surely this has been the way that the Lord has used for the Lord to have his gospel and his preaching known, his truth. And he is using those that are curious, those that like to travel, those that like to leave their native country, to go and adventure somewhere else. But they love to adventure. And the Lord has allowed this because the Lord says, they sh as well one day speak of my things, my work, and my church will be formed in those places. Amen. So brothers and sisters, as a phrase that says, there is not bad that good does not result from. But and you may say, oh, why did I leave my country? Why am I here? Why? What am I doing? And they, you're, you are not making a fortune, but you are evangelizing. And that's what you are now in the church. Here in this country, marvelous in the culture and history. Here we are. We seem maybe like a small speck. We are a beautiful speck that the Lord has brought with his word. And his word has to be known by many persons, by many persons. And what is beautiful, the most beautiful, and what I have seen in all the churches and the countries that I have been, is that those that are born in that country, they fall in love with God. They fall in love because they have a heart like we do. They fall in love with the Lord, and the Lord is there with them, and the Lord blesses them. The Lord as well sees that each one has their heart, has their need, even though there may be the appearance, but the Lord knows each one and he gives because he is there and he is brought. And the Lord is the one in charge of bringing all the persons and congregating them in their, in the church. So our Lord is here in the church, governing, ruling, directing, teaching, guiding, we are not alone. We are not persons by accident because we just are here. No, it is the Lord whom has wanted that works be done, churches, temples, or however you may want to call it. But the congregation is of God, the churches of the Lord. And this is why, brothers and sisters, continue forward. Do not lose hope and do not doubt ever. But be strong, be full of hope, enthusiasm, and believe in God. Look for the Lord. And for no matter how difficult you may see things, do not fail. Because the Lord is not going to be seeing you or hearing you. He is going to bless you. Do not doubt of it. Never lose hope. The Lord is close to you. And the Lord is going to help you to move forward in your problems, in your needs, in what you may be lacking and what you're missing, all that you need. The Lord is there next to you. So we have to continue forward because we have to evangelize. We have to study languages. We have to study all languages. Those that have the opportunity to do so because we have to speak of God to all persons. To this, the Lord has called us. And now we're going to be honoring our Lord, meditating here in 1 Corinthians. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I'm going to give the opportunity and time as well for a few questions. Perhaps you may have a doubt or a worry. Or let us say something that you want or perhaps in according to the previous Bible studies that you may have seen, sometimes questions arise or doubts, not doubting of God, no, but not being able to comprehend or understand clearly a question or a response. So you now have the opportunity to intervene as well with your question. We're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Chapter 2 that reads, we are here with the Apostle Paul that sends a letter to the church of Corinth during this era. And as well, the Lord not only spoke for them during that time, 
but as well the Lord spoke for the future. Because the Lord always had into account that since he is the same of yesterday, today, and forevermore, the word that he teaches to man, to women, as well will be of value for today, for the man of today, and the one of tomorrow and of the future. It's a value for yesterday. We are in this present, and it will be a value for us today. We retake it because this is what the Lord wants for us to learn and that we retake the teachings given by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of the Apostle Paul many centuries ago, 2,000 plus more or less. So it so reads the Apostle Paul during that time in his letter, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech. This testimony was the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The apostle says, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. He says these things because the apostle Paul was a man who was educated. He was well in speech. He was very intellectual. But he said he never used his intellect to speak of the gospel of the Lord. But always he's directed himself with simple words or expressed himself in this manner for the people to comprehend him. Verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. What he wanted to reiterate was our Lord Christ express that Christ was the son of God. He was the Lord, the one who had become flesh and that now was there in spirit manifesting to his followers. Verse three, I was with you in weakness, Paul says. It says, I was with you in weakness, in fear and in much trembling. This weakness refers that when he was there, it was prohibited that for people to change religions. During that time, what reigned was Judaism. What reigned as well was pagans. In Judaism, they practiced the law of Moses. And Paul, he was a Jew. And when there he goes to Corinth, and they hear him, that he is there preaching a gospel, a doctrine that is different than the law of Moses, he was there in danger. His life was in danger. So he says, in weakness he went, because he did not have whom to support, whom to help him, whom to protect him. There was not a security for him. He was there exposed to take him to prison, or he be condemned to death. For preaching another religion. This is why he says. I was with you in weakness. He alone. Simply the power of God. Accompanying him. Guarding him. Helping him. But there was not. Any other human strength. Protecting him. I was there in weakness. In fear and much trembling. And my speech. And my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. It is to say that he was telling them that his preaching was not on the intellectual level of what he knew, but simply it was the Holy Spirit himself who had taken him to preach the gospel to do miracles, signs, because he preached. And at the same time, there were many miracles and signs in the people. And this was the demonstration of God. This was the power that the Lord was there manifesting. So that the people would believe that what Paul preached was the truth and that they had to believe in the preaching, in his word. So this is why he said that it was with demonstration of the spirit and power so that your faith, it continues, so that your faith and your belief 
you've already believed, you Corinth, you've believed in Christ, you believed in the gospel, but it needed to be preached to reinforce. So it says so that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And we here, brothers and sisters, we are here living an air which is similar. Because we today are here preaching of the Lord. We are preaching Bible as well. This marvelous book where thousands of religions have been formed. Thousands of persons have it. And we are teaching, preaching, but the power of God is manifesting in our lives. And we see today how the Lord has manifested, doing miracles, signs, transforming the people, changing people, giving peace, joy, happiness. There are persons <clears throat> who wanted to commit suicide, and the Lord has come to their life and has taken away that tendency. And these persons no longer want to commit suicide, but live because they're happy, because the Lord has done a miracle in their hearts, in their life. This is what the Lord has done. He has been showing that what we are preaching today is on behalf of the Lord. If it was not this way, then no one would believe us. And we would simply would be wasting time. As we can see, just as it happened to Paul during this time, that the Spirit of God manifested, giving miracles and signs. Today as well, our Lord manifests among us, doing miracles and signs. And in verse 6 reads, However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Wisdom not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. They're speaking of the philosophers, those great writers, those who are important during that time. But we are not speaking of that wisdom, human wisdom, but the one that the Lord gives in the church to the believers. Why? Because the Lord was already raising up prophets, raising up apostles, teachers, evangelists. The Lord was raising them up. And this is the wisdom from on high. This is the power from on high that the Lord gives to man, man and women who convert in their heart. And this is why the apostle says, yes, that wisdom is not of this age. It is given by God. All because it is with the demonstration of the power of the Lord. Verse 7, it reads, but we speak, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. It says mystery in a mystery. The wisdom that is hidden, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. And this wisdom of God in mystery was referring to Jesus Christ and his gospel. He was the mystery. He was the wisdom that was hidden. Our Lord Jesus Christ, his gospel. He, the son of God. He, the Lord himself. How difficult for man to believe that the Lord is God. How difficult for many. It has been sense to accept that Jesus Christ is Lord. They see him as a regular man or as a prophet, but not as the Lord. And here the apostle is teaching the divinity of the Lord, the dignity as our Lord. And we as well believe that he is God. Why? Because he is the one that is manifesting in our lives. He is the one that is speaking through prophecy. He speaks through prophecy. He speaks through dreams, through visions, revelations, other spiritual gifts. There it is, our Lord Jesus Christ. There it is, the Spirit of the Lord or the Spirit of God. There is the hidden wisdom. There is the hidden mystery there. And this is why we believe. Because he has convinced us. Whom? What human being? What human being is capable of giving another person to prophesy or to speak what is hidden in the heart? No one. It doesn't exist. Only the mystery that is hidden. The wisdom. 
our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to his name. Blessed is the Lord. And it continues. And it reads that this mystery or this hidden wisdom or this hidden wisdom referring to Jesus Christ. Verse 8, please read. Which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. This hidden wisdom, this hidden wisdom, this no human being could understand, understood, never knew, because they were rebellious, hard of heart, because they did not believe in the Lord. And this is why it says that if they would have known this mystery or this wisdom, never would they have crucified the Lord of glory. And 9 reads, but as it is written, in Isaiah, a writing in Isaiah, the prophet, it says, But as it was written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. This it states, What eyes has not seen, man has not heard. It has not entered into the heart. These things God had hidden simply for those that love him, those that believe in his name. And if we, if we today retake this, this is what we are living. We are enjoying this wisdom, this wisdom from on high, this mystery that is hidden. We are enjoying it today. Because we believed in the Lord the day he spoke to us for the first time. He convinced us because he spoke to the depth of our heart. Not any other human being in, had heard of me. No human being. When the Lord spoke to me, I said, I believe because man does not know me. Man does not know what I think or feel. And the Lord does. This is why I believed in him. This is why we believe and you believed. This is why you are here. May the glory and honor always be for our Lord. And we thank our Lord. May the Lord bless his word. And here in verse 10. Those that he loves. He has something so beautiful. What does the Lord have? Read verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through the spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes the deep things of God. Thanks be to the Lord for this marvel. We thank you, Lord. How beautiful it is. Beautiful. That the Lord revealed through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. All he searches. The Holy Spirit. It searches what is deep of God. Glory to the Lord. Eleven. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him, meaning our conscious? It is to say, who knows if I am not myself? I myself, I know. Because I know what I think. I know what I feel. I know what I analyze. It is me. No one knows my thoughts, nor knows my plans, nor my projects. Simply I know, meaning my conscience or my spirit knows what I myself am thinking or wanting to do. So as human beings, we cannot know anyone or anyone know us. There is someone that does, our Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Lord, all powerful. He is a spirit as well. Verse number, and then it says, who knows the things of God? No one knows the things of God except whom? The Spirit of God. This is why it says the Spirit of God searches the depth of God because it is the same. It is the Lord. It is God. And we have 
have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit that comes from the Lord, so that we know what the Lord has granted us. Verse 13. These things we also speak, not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Thanks be to our Lord that says that the Lord is the one who teaches us his word. He teaches us his doctrine. Taught during that time and is teaching us today because the Lord is the same of yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. 14. But the natural man or the man that is unbelieving or the man that does not accept God, that does not believe in the Lord, or does not have of the Lord, is the natural man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God because of his unbelief, because they are foolishness to him, nor he cannot know them because they are spiritually discerned. Simply, we have to believe in God to be able to discern and understand and comprehend the plans of God. 15, please read. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. So the spiritual we that have believed in the Lord, we consider ourselves spiritual, meaning we are searching for the power of God, searching for eternal life, and we are following the path of the doctrine that takes us to salvation, to eternal life. This is called the spiritual. It is us, the believers. We are the spiritual, meaning we have accepted the Lord. We have accepted the gospel. We have accepted the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. This is why it says the spiritual. So it, it says the spiritual, but the 15, but he who is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged, is true by no one. We, we the people of the world whom have not believed, who do not have the Lord, who do not live experiences with God, who have not accepted the Lord in their heart, he cannot judge us. But we can judge them. And we say, do say to them, if you don't believe, in Jesus Christ, whom is God, the Son of God, the path that goes to eternal life. And you don't believe in the Bible, which is the path that the Lord left for us to learn, the book to learn, this true path that takes us to God. If you don't accept, if you don't live the experiences with God, you're going to be condemned. I am judging them. We are judging. You're going to be condemned. Because this so says, he who does not believe will be lost. The Lord says, and he that believes will be saved, and he that does not will be condemned. So we say to him, if you don't believe, you're going to be condemned. You're going to be lost. There we are judging because the Lord has given us the authority to judge because we are the spiritual, meaning the believers in Christ. We don't have to confuse these words, the spiritual, with perfect the spiritual is those of believers of Christ. They can judge those who do not have of God, who do not have of God, cannot judge us because we live experiences with the Lord and they have not lived them. We are in this process of work, of evangelization. We are here in this process of speaking to them and of telling them that we invite them so that they can participate and come and live this reality that we are living with the Lord, with the Spirit of God. So we are as well not going to be against them. We are not going to be judging them and condemning them, but we are going to have mercy and love and patience with all and say, come, come to the path of the Lord. Come to the place where I attend so that you may feel the presence of God. So the Lord may bless you. So that the Lord may give you peace, the joy, the happiness. Come and you will see that you will enjoy. This is what we have to do. Amen. And it continues. 
But he is spiritual, judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For he who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, the Lord, but we have the mind. When it says that we have the mind of Christ, what is the mind of Christ? The mind of the Lord, when he was working as a man on the earth, he behaved as a human being. He acted as a human being and he believed the father. He obeyed the father. And he was submissive, obedient. He sacrificed. And all of this he did. And his mentality was to love the father, to pray to the father, to worship. He said, I worship you, father, you that made all these things. I praise you, father, the Lord of heaven, the earth, he said. He prayed, giving example to man. Because this is how the Lord acted as a human being to give us example. And this was the mentality. So it says that we, we as well have the mind of Christ because this is our desire, our want is to love our Lord, to praise and glorify the Lord, to follow his path, his ways, to do good works, to, to do what is correct and just, what is right what is wise and prudent, what is intelligent, to stop sinning. This, this is the mind of Christ. This is the mind that we have, that concept of our Lord, of our Christ, to do what is right, to continue in righteousness, to be able to gain eternal life. And at the same time, we are honoring our Lord and glorifying the Lord because he deserves the praise. It is not only that we are struggling to reach eternal life. I struggle as well to honor my Lord because he so deserves. And as well, thank you, Lord, because as well, you're going to give me eternal life. It is this, brothers and sisters, our struggle. This is we'll here what the apostle teaches in Corinth. But as well, the teaching is for us. And this teaching goes to out thousands of years later for those that will come. This is why the teaching will be of value because he is the same of yesterday, today, and forever. The glory and honor is for our Lord. Questions now? Questions? And now let us continue with our questions. Very brief. Good evening, sister. I come from the Church of Bern, and we await for you in Bern with our open hearts. Sister, I have a question that is in the first of Timothy chapter 5 verse 8 where it speaks to us about our duties with others yes sister first Timothy chapter 5 8 yes and it says but if anyone does brothers and sisters let us quickly first Timothy chapter 5 8 so you can as well participate in the scripture in uh, First of Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, it speaks to us about our duties with others. And it says, But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Sister, in uh, this verse, it seems as though we can see it in different points of view, where, for example, we can see it in the point of view of the work they do with the foundation or our spiritual lives or with our families or people that do not come to church. So, sister, my question is, how do we apply this verse in the different, the different aspects of our lives? Well, this verse is referring to the responsibility. Every man or woman, every human being, be responsible for your actions, for your works. Be responsible for your obligations. You as a person have responsibilities. Things that you need to do in your life. If you're a child, you have an obligation and a responsibility. Obey whom? Your parents or those that are older. Respect. You have responsibilities, obligations, a child. He that is an adolescent as well. The pre-adolescent, the adult, and then as well, marriage, and then your marriage, you have responsibilities, you have responsibilities in your household, 
And as a human being, responsibilities and obligations continue until you arrive to the presence of the Lord. So the Lord educates us in our life <clears throat> and places tasks and tells us you need to do this and that. Regarding responsibilities, he that does not provide for his house, regarding here, it looks like a marriage or a family, where the husband or the wife, however you may want to call it, the husband and wife, one of the two is not providing, is not fulfilling with their obligations physically here, because it says he that does not provide for his own is not responsible and this person who is not responsible in fulfilling that obligation in his household, working and giving and support with the family, with the children, even with their parents as well. So it says that this person is compared to someone what? Who is there what? Unbelieving, who, is in, who does not know the things of the Lord. This is not what the Lord wants for us. As we can see, brothers and sisters, we are speaking here more than 2,000 years ago, this teaching of the Apostle Paul, that it teaches Timothy so that he can teach his church. And we today, we see the same situations in the households, in the families, the lack of responsibility, the lack of organization, laziness. Not working, not wanting to fulfill the responsibility, the abandonment from the husband who leaves the children, families who are broken. But when we know the things of the Lord, we begin or to receive that sense of responsibility of love and affection and mercy, respect. So we begin to fulfill and to give to the Lord what he deserves and to our others what they deserve. And this is why it is beautiful when we follow the Lord, because he does teach us to value, to be respectful with each other, and to fulfill our obligation. To work and to support each other, what you can in your household and in your family. It is this, brothers and sisters. It is this, and as a sister says, you can put into different angles however you want, but here it refers to responsibility of a man and a woman who have with their family what surrounds them, the content that they're in to be responsible and to fulfill the obligations of what they need to do because that's good testimony. So the person says, I'm from church, I'm a believer, I'm responsible, but you don't help with your family and you don't give what you need to when that's shameful. And you can't say you're a believer, that you are a person that's spiritual in the church. Let us continue. Continue another question. Sister Mary Luisa, God bless you. It is an honor to be before you to ask you this question. I give thanks to the Lord because this is a promise fulfilled. Sister, what does it mean to have a high spiritual stature and what is it for? Thank you. May the Lord bless you. What, what, is, what is it of value? What is it of value to love the Lord and to stop sinning and to leave the world? You know the sins, correct? All the sins, we know them by heart. But there are some sins that do such harm. Pride, envy, covetousness, greed. Yes, those sins do such harm. We are in the midst when people laugh with us but they're all envious, all hypocrite, liars, boastful, proud, hot-tempered. Look at all those hidden sins that there are there. When we leave and abandon all of that, because we do so with the help of God, because the Lord is whom helps us to change. I want to change, Lord, and I do my part and I procure and I try and I make the effort and I struggle and I try to change. So the Lord helps me and says, this person wants to change. I'm going to help them. She wants to change. I'm going to help her so that she can change and please me and live a righteous life. Correct. That is to reach a spiritual level as a high spiritual level. You change and then you raise, I don't know how many steps in your spiritual life. That is 
to grow in your spiritual level, your testimony, how you live. So you were a person that were hot tempered, for example, and you cursed and you said many bad words. You were obscene and you offended others and you had those rages and anger, but then you changed because you wanted to please God and the Lord helped you. And now you are a person who is patient, respectful, well-mannered. You no longer use curse words. You're no longer hot-tempered. You no longer offend. And you say, people say, you have of God. You're a person that is calm. You're a person who has changed. You're not the same as before. You now are holy. You are holy. This is to have a spiritual level that is high. In the midst that we change, our spiritual level grows. And we don't realize it because we are here walking on earth, but our Lord is the one who sees the spiritual level that we have. And he wants for all of us to grow each day more. This is why the Lord is on high, we say. The Lord is on high. He is in the greatest levels, but the Lord is here with us as well. So if we're going to compare that spiritual level physically, it's not in accordance. It doesn't compare. Because it's more than the planets. No, the Lord is here. And he is on high. Yes. So in the spiritual aspect is so different than the physical level. But we already know that it is a category. To say the Lord is on high is a level, is prestige. But the Lord is so close to us as well. Very well. Let us continue. Sister Maria Luisa, I greet you with all of my heart alongside everyone from Geneva. Welcome. It's taken me 10 years to ask you this question, and I love you with all of my heart. Congratulations. 10 years to ask a question. <laughs> sister yes, Maria sister. Luisa, I would like... <clears throat> sister yes. Maria Luisa, I would... Really like it if you can explain to me here in the first of Samuel 18, verse 1. Yes, sister. Read, sister. Okay, sister. Thank you. First Samuel 18, 1. Yes, ma'am. Verse 1. It says, the word of the Lord says, Now, when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Sister Marlisa, I would like for you to explain to us about the love of Jonathan and David. May the Lord continue to bless you greatly. Thank you. you. The Lord there was giving the illustration of the sincerity of a friendship, a sincere friendship. Saul and his family, or the house of the King Saul, would convert into enemies of David in his house, his family. And the Lord knew that these two families would be enemies so much that they would want to kill one another, that one of the two would destroy each other. The Lord knew this. This is why the Lord allowed and placed Jonathan, the son of King Saul, would love or would have such a profound friendship with David. And because of this friendship, it came forth that David was protected and guarded from death many times when Saul was persecuting to kill him. Jonathan intervened and David was saved from the hands of King Saul. The Lord allowed this friendship. It was a plan of God intervene. It was a plan of God in the middle. But if we see in human way, what a beautiful friendship and what beautiful way that we can have friends and be sincere with that friend and that friend be sincere with me. It is beautiful because you feel joy, happiness. You feel good with these persons, friends, that friendship that is profound. So you feel good and wonderful, happy. As if they're family. So the Lord allowed all these things to give us example. And with the plans that he had with these families. And later on, if you continue reading the story, you will see that because of this friendship, 
as well. David, he as well became king. But Jonathan, Jonathan with his family, with his children, as well occupied important places in the kingdom because of that friendship. So we sometimes see these examples in these illustrations. And we see the different points of view. The different points of negative or positive, And we are going to choose the best that we see for our practical life. They loved and it was a, such a beautiful and profound friendship. Imagine so, there are some people who misinterpret persons who are evil, who read the Bible literally. And they interpret the Bible literally. And they say, and they begin to say, is that they were homosexual and that this is why they loved one another. This is what the devil has always wanted to disveer in the word of the Lord. But there is not this, simply that the Lord was showing a friendship that was sincere and true. What is a true friendship? A true friend? The Lord Christ said, the friend, a true friend, gives his life for the other. It is this, that is a true friend. Let us continue. Good evening, sister. May the Lord bless you. Welcome to Switzerland. And I am overjoyed with ch happiness. And I will ask this following question. I have a question in Psalm 59. Psalm 59, verse 11 and 13. Yes. Psalm 59. 11 and 13. If you allow me to. Yes, brother. I would like to read three verses before to go into the context and understand the question, if you allow me to. Yes, Psalm 59. I will read for the glory and the honor of the Lord. But you, oh, verse 8, but you, O Lord, shall laugh at them. You shall have all the nations in derision. I will wait for you, O you, his strength, for God is my defense. My God of mercy shall come to meet me. God shall let me see my desire my enemies. And here I will have the question. Do not slay them, lest my people forget. Scatter them by your power and bring them down. O oh Lord, our shield. I'll skip to number 13. Consume them and wrath consume them, that they may not be. And let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. Sister Mary Luisa Apparently, there is a contradiction between 11 and 13. There is no such contradiction, but I don't understand why is, is it not contradicting itself. And so, if you could very explain well. to me, sister, thank you very the much. The Lord God Jesus bless you. is referring to the Lord Jesus Christ who was persecuted by his brothers, Jews. The Lord Jesus was a Jew. Because he was born of a woman, he was a Jew, and he was persecuted by the Jews, and they were the enemies. And this is why, in verse 8, the Lord Jesus speaks to the Father and says that the Lord was going to laugh of the enemies of the Lord, of seeing that these enemies wanted to do such harm to the Lord, and the Lord never allowed them to do this harm that they wanted to do. And this is why it says that the Lord would laugh and that he would laugh at all the nations of the power of the enemy. He would wait. He said, I wait in you because he acted as a human being. In verse 11, it says, do not slay them. Whom? Who the enemies? The Jews. Here we're speaking the enemies of the Lord Jesus who were the Jews during that time of 2000 years ago. Hear the Lord Jesus of saying to the Father not to kill them. Why? Because he, he takes away their life, then they were not going to have any suffering. What better than to die, to wait? No, do not kill them. Disperse them. Scatter them around the world, and you will see that they will suffer. Let them suffer the consequences. So do not slay them so that people will not forget. Scatter them with your power and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth, the enemies of the Lord, 
in the words of their lips. Let them ever be taken in their pride and for the crushing and lying which they speak. They were always slandering and speaking against the Lord. They spoke blasphemy against the Lord and they spoke many lies and they deceived the people so that the people would not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as he that was sent by God. Then it continues in 13. Consume them in wrath. Consume them. Understanding that when you disperse them in all, in all places, they will stop being a people. So you destroyed them. You destroyed the people. You destroyed a nation. This is what occurred. Because they were dispersed. And it ended in a spiritual sense. It ended this nation or this people. Holy privileged by God it ended it stopped being even though today there exists a country exists the country but the Lord does not put into account those countries like he did 2,000 years ago that the Lord said you are my people my favorite nation my chosen but the Lord dispersed them and says you no longer are my people that is the punishment. Today, we don't know, the Bible says, that simply all he that believes in Jesus Christ as Lord and Son of God will convert into a people in symbolical called people of Israel. But it is a spiritual people, not physical. So in the psalm, it is saying destroy. And this is why the brother says there is no contradiction. And there is not. Simply consume them as people preferred by the Lord because in being dispersed, they were destroyed. The preferred people ended and know that the Lord governs Jacob and Israel until the ends of the earth. But here the Lord begins to govern a people, Israel, spiritually or spiritual, which is the church of our Lord. So the church of our Lord is, is going to be around the world and is going to be added those whom he wants to be saved. And the Lord is going to choose from those nations as well, all of those in the ancient times whom were his chosen people. From there as well, the Lord is going to choose persons for the kingdom of heaven. But as well, they will be called church of our Lord. Because all will be added. The prophet Isaiah said that all the nations will come and all will be a people, a church for the Lord. This is what the Bible teaches. So therefore, for this, we say to the people, if you say that your religion is the truth, well, I congratulate you that your religion is the truth. But in my congregation where I gather, the Lord manifests. The Lord speaks. The Lord raises prophets, prophetess. There is prophecy. There is dreams, visions. There is miracles. So therefore, I invite you as well to participate. I congratulate you because you are looking for God. But I as well invite you to enjoy what I am enjoying. This is our way of evangelization. And we... To be wise. We to be wise to not offend anyone or judge or offend anyone and say you're living in lies, but congratulate them because they are looking for the Lord. In their way, they look for the Lord, but come, come here with me and you will see that you will feel the presence of the Lord and the Lord is going to define the future and you will make the decision. Very well, let us continue. Good evening, sister. Thank you for coming to my country. I love you very much in the Lord. I want to tell you that I'm from German-speaking Switzerland. The Lord taught me to speak Spanish in a miraculous way because he promised me and for him nothing's impossible. Oh, blessed is the Lord. Amen. 
I want to tell you that in German-speaking Switzerland, I was able to speak to people native there about the foundation and also about Miraism, and they are very marveled, and they also congratulate the foundation and Mida as well. And I want to ask you a question, if you will allow me, in the first of Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7. But you are speaking very well. You Glory beat be us. God. First Corinthians. Chapter 13. Yes. Verse 7. Yes. Here it speaks about love and it says. Yes. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. My question is, in what way or in what what does it mean believes all things when it comes to love when love let us remember that love is to stop sinning to stop sinning since there are so many sins those that are seen the adultery fornication drinking homicide kidnapping stealing those that you see and those that are not seen, rage, anger, envy, covetousness, pride, to be a liar, to steal, to be one that deceives another, all this we have to, to abandon and you don't see it. And when we know the Lord, we want to please God and I make an effort to please the Lord and the Lord helps me. And between my effort and what I am willing, and I try, and the Lord, I'm a new man, I am a new woman, I'm no longer sin. So when I'm no longer practicing sin, I say I have love. This man has love because he is no longer committing sin. This woman has love because she's no longer practicing sin. This is the Lord who sees these things. So the love, when this man and woman has that love, meaning they have aparted from sin, they do not commit sin, because it no longer exists in their being. They begin better yet, goodness, love, affection, understanding, peace, patience, sincerity, mercy, to be generous, gentle, attentive, compassionate, all this flows forth. So they say that this man and woman, when they stop sinning, it says that they suffer all, meaning that they have patience of the evil days, of the tribulation, of problems, of difficulties, all that comes that he supports all, he tolerates, he has patience. This means that they suffer all things, meaning that they have patience, they are tolerant, and they overtake this situation with understanding. It is this. This is what it means that they suffer all. So here we better yet change the words that he bears all, he tolerates all, he overtakes all with patience, with acceptance, waiting always in the Lord that he be that changes and removes the evil day or the tribulation. Amen. And as well, he believes all. Yes, he believes in the Lord. All that comes from the Lord, he believes that the Lord spoke, that the Lord promised, that the Lord supports, that the Lord guards us, that the Lord promises, that the Lord is going to heal, that the Lord is going to open doors, that the Lord is going to solve a problem, that he's going to guard and protect us from dangers, from something, someone's going to hurt me, the Lord's going to protect me. All of this, I believe, because I no longer have sin, I'm with God. So I believe in the Lord always. All this I wait in him. Amen. So I wait and bear all. All, as I said in the beginning, for more than 50 years ago, the Lord made promises. And we believed and we continued in this path of the Lord, waiting, believing, and waiting these promises of the Lord. And understanding many things, many evil days, waiting for the truth and understanding that there were criticisms, envy from the people. We endured all of this. But in the love of the Lord, 
you tolerate all things because the enemy, you're not going to say, oh, I'm going to find revenge because I'm going to come against you. No, since that doesn't exist, I trust in the Lord. I wait for the Lord to resolve, to help me, to guard me. He places all things as he defends me. So those are the results of love. Those are the results of a man and woman who have stopped sinning. Very well. Let us continue another question. Bonjour, ma soeur Maria Luisa. Et je suis très heureuse aujourd'hui d'être devant vous, en face de vous. Good evening, Sister Maria Luisa. I am very happy and joyful to be before you. Je viens de l'île Maurice. On a commencé l'œuvre de Dieu à l'île Maurice. I come from the island of Mauritius. We began the work of the Lord there. Je témoigne pour la gloire et l'honneur de notre Seigneur. And I testify for the honor and glory of the Lord. Voilà, on a commencé l'œuvre de, de, de le Seigneur à l'île Maurice. On est euh, à 30 personnes qui ont commencé l'étude biblique tous les dimanches. Il y a 11 personnes constantes qui viennent tous les dimanches. We began the work of the Lord there for about two years ago now. There, there has been about 30 people who have visited, and among those 30, there are 11 people who are constant. Glory be to the Lord, so that we can see, so that we can see how the Lord loves this place, loves the people. The Lord loves and sees what is in the heart. Hearts willing for God. The Lord is not seeing anything physical. The Lord said to Samuel, Go and choose he that is going to be king in Israel. Go of the children. He had eight children. And he said, Do not look at the beauty. Do not look at the physical aspect. Do not look at the physical, because the Lord does not look at the physical. It is the heart, what he sees. Glory to the Lord. So the Lord loves his children, and he has never forgotten his children, his creatures. And in any corner, no matter how far or how difficult to arrive, there the Lord is looking at his people. They're looking at the island These hearts, those that are searching for him, and I know that he's going to bless in a great way. A question? My daughter has a question, sister. Bonjour, ma soeur Maria Luisa. Que Dieu vous bénisse énormément. Good evening, sister Maria Luisa. May the Lord bless you greatly. J'aimerais, si vous me le permettez, vous poser une question dans Proverbe 4, verset 23. I would like to, if you allow me to ask you a question in Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs 4. 23. Yes, sister. you may read. We will start reading now. Yes. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. The question of the sister is... Euh, J'aimerais, ma sœur, si vous, puissiez, si vous pourriez nous enseigner à comment euh, garder notre cœur. Dieu vous bénisse énormément. Sister, I would like to ask you how or what can we do in order to keep our heart as it says it here. May the Lord bless you greatly. It reads, verse 23, but let us read a little bit before. Verse 20, my son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Whom? The reason, the sayings, the teaching. For they are life to those who find them in health. It is the word of the Lord, the doctrine. Referring to the doctrine. This doctrine is life and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence and out of it. Meaning, abstain yourself from sinning. Because out of it, There, the Lord who gives eternal life, who blesses, and 
he that teaches his word teaches the path, the Lord who is teaching us, teaching us the way. And we should guard and keep ourselves from not sinning. But keep the doctrine. What he teaches us, his ways, his guidance, his counsel. This that he gives us, follow it word for word and love our Lord. Because it says that of he is eternal life. And he gives it to whom he wants, who gains it. And who he doesn't, he won't. Because of time, I'm going to give time for one question. Because of time, this is the last last intervention. But brothers and sisters, don't be worried and anguish. Don't be sad. You in the Bible studies, you have answers. When the people ask questions, what you are going to ask, surely it will be there. And there you are going to obtain your response. Ask the pastor. If not, ask him. He knows as well. Work for the pastor as well. Yes, sister. Bonjour, mes frères et mes sœurs. Je souhaite témoigner pour l'honneur et la gloire de notre Seigneur. Good evening, brothers and sisters. I would like to testify for the honor and glory of our God. Ma sœur, Maria Luisa, je vous souhaite la bienvenue dans cette œuvre de Genève et de la Suisse. Sister Maria Luisa, I welcome you here to Switzerland. Je suis d'origine Sri Lankaise. Je ne parle pas espagnol. I am from Sri Lanka. I do not speak Spanish. Et lorsque je suis arrivé dans cette église il y a six ans, and when I came to this church six years ago, j'avais quitté ma famille de France qui était nombreuse et je n'avais personne. I had left behind my family in France, a numerous family, and I had no one. Et dans la première prophétie que j'ai reçue dans cette église, Le Seigneur m'a parlé en me disant, je vais te donner une famille encore plus grande que tu, en av- que tu avais déjà. And when God spoke to me in prophecy for the first time, God told me, I will give you a family more numerous than the one you have before. How beautiful! What a family! Et c'est comme ça que j'ai eu beaucoup de frères et sœurs dans l'église. Malgré que je ne parle pas espagnol, ils m'ont transmis tellement de l'amour que je me suis même pas sentie différente. In spite of not speaking Spanish, now I have many brothers and sisters in the church and there are no differences. Et par la même manière, je pensais que les dons spirituels et les expériences spirituelles n'étaient destinées que aux Sud-Américains. And I also thought that spiritual experiences and spiritual gifts were only for people from South America. <laughs> Mais le Seigneur m'a parlé encore une fois et il m'a dit, je sais ce que tu penses dans ton cœur, mais je vais te prouver que ce que tu dis n'est pas vrai. Parce que je vais te mettre en exemple et je vais te faire sentir ces expériences spirituelles et je vais te montrer en songe que ce n'est pas vrai. And the Lord spoke to me once again in prophecy and said, I will show you that it is not true and I will give you spiritual experiences. Ma soeur Maria Luisa, lorsque j'ai perdu ma mère, j'ai chanté vos cœurs de tout mon cœur. Uh, les cantiques de tout mon cœur en espagnol avec votre voix. When I lost my mother, I started to sing the choruses and the hymns from the bottom of my heart. Et comme je chantais avec tout mon cœur avec votre voix, c'est comme si uh, toute la peine que j'avais de, de la perte de ma mère, eh ben, Dieu il m'avait enlevé. And when and when I started to sing, following your voice, it is as though God had removed all sorrow and all the pain I had. Je vous remercie, ma sœur, Maria Luisa, vous êtes notre prophétesse et vous êtes 
notre modèle et nous souhaitons que Dieu nous fasse à votre, à, comme vous, que nous soyons aussi à, à votre image. I would like to thank you, Sister Mary Louise, uh, because you are our prophetess, and I would like to be to your image. God bless you. May God bless you. And a special greeting, very affectionately, for those that congregate in the island of Mauricio, a special greeting. May... The Lord, the Lord is going to give you many blessings. The last, the last question. Sister, good evening. It is a privilege for me and an honor to be able to ask you, to may ask you this question because uh, 13 days ago, our Heavenly Father told me in prophecy that I was going to ask you a question. So I'm a little nervous. Uh, my question is in Proverbs Four? Yes. Verses one yes. and two. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. 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 For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. My question is as follows, sister. How can we keep um, understanding? Understanding. Understanding is to be moderate, to be moderate. And when there are times when we hold fast to so little things, when there are brothers and sisters who are long-standing members and some that are just starting out, like in my case, and we hold fast to the slightest things, the littlest things, and I want you to teach me about this. Very well. Hear the, my children the instructions of a father. The Lord speaking to the, his children, his followers, the believers, the understanding of a father. And give attention to no understanding. The understanding is to be moderate, measured, patient, wise, and everything. Prudent. This is what it means. Understanding comes from being perhaps sane, you would say, as well. We don't want uh, someone who is insane or someone who is crazy, someone who is foolish. And the opposite of this is understanding, wise understanding. So the person who is understanding, wise, use, do things prudently, correctly, in the right moment. You know how to proceed in the necessary moment. You know how to act in your life in any way, in any circumstance, in any content in your life. This is what is a person that is understanding. That you know how to act and you know how to conduct yourself in every moment, in every situation. You never speak to think. You think before speaking. You allow others to speak. You respect others. You're educated. You're well-mannered. This is understanding. So the Lord says, children, hear the instruction of a father. Because the doctrine, you're going to have understanding. You are going to be persons who are able, wise, comprehensible, righteous. Not crazy, because the others would say, oh, he's crazy. He's someone who's crazy. He don't know what he says. He don't, doesn't know what he's doing or thinking. But someone who understanding, they do. So, give good attention. Do not, for I give you good doctrine, do not forsake my law, but fulfill it. Fulfill the laws of the Lord. Fulfill the commandments of our God. Our Lord Jesus said that he always keep my commands, meaning fulfill, do, and put into practice my laws. This the Lord said, and he himself is whom is teaching here in Proverbs, that we put into practice and do the commandments of the Lord so that we can be persons wise, understanding, comprehensive, because this is how the children of God should be. Brothers and sisters, my beloved brothers and sisters, may my Lord bless you.
My beloved brothers and sisters, those that are originally from Europe, may the Lord bless you, born here. May the Lord, for He is here, always with you, taking you by the hand. Our Lord is shadow at our right hand. He is our shadow. And this is why He deserves the glory and the honor, the praise. Let us continue, Father. Let us honor our Lord. Let us look for our Lord with all of our heart. Let us pray now and let us place before the presence of our Lord the petitions, the desires, the wants, our needs, illnesses. If there is witchcraft, curses, evil spirits, all of this that makes you feel uncomfortable, makes you sad, it makes you unhappy, you're sick, speak to the Lord in this moment and share with Him the situation. And the Lord will be doing a miracle in your life. He will be there working in your life. But trust and believe that the Lord is hearing you. So let us pray, and at the same time, we're going to dismiss the service and wishing for you the best congratulating you and as well I thank the Lord for the fulfillment of his word of his promise of having here in this such distant place hearts that are following him so this this makes us very happy very satisfied because the work has been beautiful work that you have been doing of evangelization it is great and glorious and the Lord sees and the Lord will pay each one So I thank you and may the Lord bless you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, Heavenly Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, our King, our true Lord, our Creator, our Owner. Thank you, Lord, for all of this greatness, this marvel, your manifestation. For all of this magnificence, this manifestation. You each day showing us that you are the same of yesterday, today, and forevermore. This you have shown us many times, Lord, because those of us who have been here for a few years knowing your path, we are witnesses of your promises, of your word, of the fulfillment of all of these promises that you have made. And we are witnesses as well, Lord, of the support that you have given us to your church. Support that you have given, O Lord, to all of us with the work that we have been doing until today. You have guarded us, you have protected us, and you have helped us to continue forward. You have guarded us from our enemies, from those of whom have wanted to destroy us, to harm us. And you, O Lord, have always been with us extending your hand of mercy and helping us to continue protecting us, protecting us from enemies, protecting us from evil. Thank you, O Lord. We are witnesses of your marvels and your glory because you live, because you exist, O Lord, because you are real. Thank you, O Lord, for existing. Thank you, O Lord, because we are here before your presence to worship you, to praise you, to glorify you, O Lord, to tell you, my Lord, that we love you, And that we want to do your will. We want to please you. Help us, O Lord, to reach this. Help us, O Lord, in your path. Each day that passes, guide us. Do not allow for us to ever leave your path to just veer. Guard us and protect us always. We want to walk righteously before you. Righteously until reaching the goal. Lord, we want to do your will. Bless, O Lord, all of the brothers and sisters in this evening, and as well, all of those that are going to be watching in the video. Bless them, each one, because you, O Lord, are with each one in whatever place or whatever corner of the world, wherever they might be. There you are, watching, hearing, O Lord, the prayer and the worship of those of whom are willing in their heart for you. Bless, O Lord, the brothers and sisters. Deliver them, Lord, from illnesses from the diverse diseases, mental illness as well, spiritual, physical as well, incurable diseases. 
those persons that live in disabilities, O Lord, do miracles and signs, O Lord, so that you may be giving the joy and the peace. Blessed Lord, deliver and cast out all power of the enemy, all power of the devil, all evil spirit. Rebuke, O Lord, all curse and spell. Deliver, O Lord, each brother and sister. Guard and protect, O Lord, from all of these powers of the enemy. Destroy the work of the enemy. Destroy the work of the devil. Deliver, O Lord, and cleanse and heal, my Lord. Extend your hand, healing, O Lord, upon those that are ill. Lord, remove the pains and the sufferings. Remove all illness in their body. Holy Father, in the glorious name of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, we ask, O Lord, that it be you giving deliverance and healing, cleansing for all, O Lord. And as well, Lord, look that there are petitions, there are needs as well, that you grant every need and fulfill the petitions of the heart as well. Lord, do not be far, O Lord. Help each brother and sister. Help them so that they can be close to you every day of their life. Thank you, my Father. Thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. The worship is for you. The praise is for you. The glory is for you for now and evermore. Glory and honor to you, my Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the glorious name of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son. Blessed and worshiped is your name forever, evermore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you to the all-powerful. The glory and honor and the praise is for our Lord always. Thanks be to the Lord. May God bless you in a great way. I love you with all my heart. I love you. Thank you, brothers and sisters. May God bless you. And until the next time.